G'day. Today I um, made up a little bit of tooling for my pan brake. I've been wanting to make up a triangular section um, like that. Only a couple of short lengths, two, three hundred millimetres long, for, a, for another project that I've got in mind, which we'll see a bit later on. Uh, but to do that, uh, I had to work out a way of, of folding up a closed section. Now, most pan brakes, all pan brakes that I've seen around the place, you know, will allow you to fold that first angle, but then to fold that over, you, you can't do it. Uh, in industry, they use uh, press brakes, uh, among other things, and they can do some, some uh, they have some strange tooling. What I've done is made up a bit of tooling um, that slips inside there and enables that to fold as well as folding over the back there and then that can be removed relatively easily from the, the, the pan brake. So um, I'm just going to run you through that uh, and there will be a few uh, hints on, on sheet metal and how to do that. I just paused here to uh, show a couple of things. Uh, this is this is just dressing up some stock, nothing terribly exciting about it but um, one is you can probably just make out the lines on top there from the cutter and that's how you tell that your your cutting or cutting head is in tram because you get lines from both sides if you're not getting that you need to check your tram now sometimes if you if you're making a heavy cut you won't get that because it's it's deflecting the cutter a little bit but you should get that with a with a a, a mill that's probably in tram so um, if you're ever wondering is my mill in tram just take a light cut across something and see whether you get a pattern like that if you don't get a pattern then there could be something wrong uh, and you'll get that even with a with a single tooth fly cut the other thing i wanted to show you is you can actually mill two pieces or even more if you're feeling game of material at once uh, what you've got to remember is that the force has to go through both pieces of of material uh, otherwise if you if you have them side by side or or something like that you may find that because one isn't precisely the same thickness as the other you'll get it you'll get some movement in there so if you do it like this where you've got two pieces and the, and the force is going straight through them uh, you'll be you'll be fine these are the hold down clamps for the um, the bending blade uh, they are a copy of, of what I've currently got um, with some changes and the way they work is they clamp onto a beam in the bender like so okay um, however what I have to do now is counterbore that. Now I thought I'd show you how I do counterboring here because it's um, I don't use fancy bits or anything I've just got some some uh, drill bits with uh, flat ends and I've mentioned those before um, but there are a couple of things to watch out for and I did have someone saying show us more machining. Well machining by itself is pretty dull but uh, this might um, be of interest to people. I swapped over to a 5 16th drill bit which is the, the same size as the one with the, the flat tip on it here. Um, I'm also going to be running this on the lower speed simply because when you when you run a drill bit into a, a, an existing hole uh, and it's only taking out slightly you do tend to get a bit of chatter so I've put that in there to, to knock that right down. I have a, a block of aluminium which I save precisely for just making sure that things are, are, are seated in the in the Morse taper. Uh, to get a drill bit out of course you use a, a, a drift. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill that size hole into here and probably take it down about five millimeters or so. I don't need to go terribly far. Uh, all I'm doing is giving myself something for the the flat bottom bit to to start in because otherwise it'll clatter all over the place if it's got the sides of a hole uh, it'll be fine and overall I only need to go down sort of eight or nine millimeters anyway As you might have been able to see, that was shaking all over the place, and that's simply because of the uh, the drill trying to get a start in that hole. Um, it's now there, so I can now swap bits over and put my flat bottom bit in and deepen that hole down to where I want it to. 
Some people can do this with a, um, a milling cutter, a slotting, a slotting bit. But the problem with doing that is that the bottom of the of the, the bit has got a what we call a fish tail. It's about a two degree relief. So you're not actually getting a flat bottom hole. You're getting one that's um, got a, a bit of a, a slope to it. Most times that probably won't matter, but it's just something to, to remember. So just use the flat bottom hole in this hole uh, and it all seems to work. It's a little bit larger than I'd like it to be, but it's the size bit I had available. Uh, and now we'll just try doing this one. Uh, this will shake a little bit too. So there you go. Counterboard. I'll run a countersink around that just to uh, even up the top. Uh, but uh, that's basically the way I do counterboards. This is my folder. It's on a wheeled trolley. Um, you know, it sits that far above the floor. And it's there because, well, it's about the only place I've got left for it. I keep a bit of uh, plywood in here most of the time in case there's a, a water leak or something and these jaws decide to get rusted together. Uh, probably more habit than anything else but there you go now the way these jaws fasten is that there's a, a groove that sits in there and then this clamps over this top ledge here so with my with my clamp pieces I've done the same thing I've got a, a groove that'll sit in there I hope and now I've got a clamp piece that'll go over the top like so this is basically how this is going to work. I've got my, my clamp set up here. I'm clamping down on a piece of five millimeter flat, which is going to be my, my bending bar. I've got a piece of 20 by 20 here, which I'm going to, to weld back in here. Uh, and that's basically just going to be a, a stiffening piece to make sure this doesn't buckle quite so much. I'll put some holes through here. And then uh, I've got some, some little plugs that I'll, I'll put in here, I'll weld into the back of this plate from here and that way I can lift this up and slide that bar out and that way I can I can make up the full tube. A couple of things that, that uh, could be improved. Uh, these pins uh, are designed to locate this back and forth so it's it's right on the on the fold line and repeatable where it needs to be. The holders that attach to the beam on the on the um, uh, pan brake uh, pivot, and so getting these on and off is a little bit difficult. So I might try and counterbore that hole just a little bit. Uh, there's not much meat there, but I can probably probably make it a little bit bigger, just to make that uh, easier. Another alternative might be if I have a tapered rim of the right size, and I don't think I do but you know, maybe a Morse number one or something like that, I might be able to just relieve the top of this hole while leaving the bottom tight uh, for the location. So that's good. Uh, the other thing is that when this is on there, um, this edge needs to be back a couple of millimetres because that's the way you adjust for thicker material. So I need to machine this edge again um, and make that a little bit deeper. I may also take the opportunity while doing that of um, machining that so that I, I just take a little bit off the front of this reinforcing bar just to, to give myself clearance. Um, this is just a trial piece I made when I first put it together because uh, I'm impatient just like everybody else and look it certainly gives me a, um, a closed section uh, I'll, I'll make these up in aluminium and then um, uh, I can weld that although not today because it's stinkingly hot in the shed and the last thing I want to be doing is hunched over a hot welder wearing heavy clothes 
To make up my uh, triangular hollow section, I'm, I'm cutting a strip of aluminium here. Uh, this is going to be four pieces, two th three hundreds and one two hundred. Cutting a, a long thin strip accurately with a set of bench shears like this can be a bit of a pain. Um, I've talked before about the need to put a little notch in the end there to help line that up and that certainly helps. The other trick I do, I've got a, a pencil line here which you may or may not be able to see. And what I do, when I, when I reposition the sheet for the next cut, I'll put a, a straight edge, in this case it's just a 300mm ruler, uh, along there and line that up with the pencil line to make sure my blade is tracking straight and that seems to fix a lot of the problems you have with, with cutting long straight sections with, with these sorts of shears. Thanks for watching, hopefully you've used to uh, pan break owners and uh, please like and share and all that sort of stuff and we'll see you for the next one.